Hambini fans and welcome to the beautiful English city of Hull where I can totally recommend if you want to come up and top up your permatan this is a good place to come along. Anyway we're here because we've come to pick up a bike so we'll let's go and find the chappy and pick up his bike. So here we are walking along the street trying to not be look too conspicuous but um, where's the guy's house? We better not get his house number on the door. Well, I don't know. We'll see. Do you rejoin me with the bike in the back? I don't know if you can see it. Maybe. So now we need to go and get it fixed. So back at Hambini headquarters, this is the frame. So this is the chapped frame. It is a giant TCR and he told me it was an X team bike. Um, what he's got in there is a BB86 bottom bracket and he wants, well, he wants a Hambini bottom bracket installing, so we need to do that. Let's get on with this and um, see how we get on. First things first, um, I mean, this is a, a bike which is basically a full bike without any wheels on it. It's got a carbon fibre zip handlebar, it's the aero type, zip, I think it's zip stem, carbon forks, that came with the bike. The, the unusual thing uh, for me, for you know, some of the bikes that come through here is it's got mechanical dura race with hydraulic disc brake. So disc brake on this bike is externally rooted cable and then you've got the hydraulic mount on the front and then similarly on the back, um, hydraulic mount on the back, um, through axle and I think these are M10. Uh, which is quite small, a lot of them are M12, again mechanical front mech, BB86 bottom bracket um, and you know the rest of it is pretty much carbon. Now the chap whose bike this is, it, it's extremely clean, there's like hardly any muck or dirt or anything like that on it, um, but you know we'll see how we get on. First thing first is we need to get this bottom bracket out. Now one of the, I've taken the other side of the bottom bracket out so we've got this side left to do. One of the things I absolutely hate about BB86 bottom brackets is the propensity for them to get stuck. Now when I took the other side out I can pretty much almost guarantee this bottom bracket is undersized because it was a right pain fishing it out. But on this side uh, we're going to use a, this is actually a 6805 tool, um, a couple of washers and a nut and this which will extract everything out. There's a bit of a fiddle setting this up but what we're going to do is we're going to use this um, in through this side and then tighten this handle round and it should just draw the bottom bracket out. As I said previously I'm pretty certain this is undersized. It's much better to do this than it is to hammer it out in my opinion puts the frame under much less stress. And it should just pop out like that. So I just bring this back into focus. That black thing there is the uh, bottom bracket cut. This is the non-drive side of the bike and you can clearly see a load of irregularities around there. I don't know if that's paint or something else around it. Also, it's not of uniform thickness all of the way around. Um, when I put the micrometer in, it is reading 40.86. So it's well undersized. So if I just try and pull that out without turning it too much, And then bring that into view. Perhaps the other way. So that's where it is. If I just pop that back in, you can see that's a snug fit. Clearly see the 40.88 around there. It's pretty bad really can also see a close-up of the, the defect around the bottom bracket, just here. So this bike frame, um, the bottom bracket's undersized, we're going to have to fix that first before we go any further. So uh, first of all, let's go and have a PowerPoint and then by the time we come back, hopefully we'll be in a position to sort it out. 
Here we go. First of all, the formalities. The pen. Right, so I've told it. I mean, this one, I wasn't quite sure how to um, label this one. Giant TCR, POS, abysmal, and that's been me and Chadwell. I wasn't sure if I was maybe being hard or not. Well, I always try to be hard. Right, by Hambini H5. I'm getting some overalls with that logo on and the Hambini logo, which is over here. Um, uh, is the pen working? The pen is working. If you're regular viewers, we'll know what all that is about. Right, we've digressed. Background, right. First of all, the bottom bracket was ridiculously tight. Ridiculously tight, not round, and internally, the manufacturing on this is poor. It's not going to fail catastrophically, but it is rubbish. Right, next. Um, and then the bubbling resin on the surface. So I'll show you some pictures of that in a minute. Right, what do the press say? Well, Peak Talk has got one. He's got the, the latest model and he went and checked his, the bottom bracket anyway, um, and I guess he looked through in, inside to see what it looked like and he said it was okay. So, you know, that's, that's one. David Arthur said it's the best thing he'd ever ridden. I mean, the best thing I'd ever ridden was clearing accounts, but... Don't, oh, fuck, fuck. Right, um, the rest of the usual shills said it was the dog's bollocks. Um, yeah, I mean, historically, it's been considered one of the better bikes. And then the final bit is the sample size. Now, the pro-Western, even though Giant is Taiwanese, people will say, oh, you've only got a sample size of one. And then when I get a wind space frame in or an ICAM frame in, they'll say, oh, it's a Hambini special. So you can't please them all. The defects in here are so blatant that um, it, it should never pass through QAQC. So let's start off with the bottom bracket. You've just seen me measure it, but anyway, it's 40.86, give or take. I mean, if it's 40.88 or 40.84, it doesn't really matter. It's just miles away from the spec, absolutely miles away. If you if you even ignore the specification and then just look at sound engineering guidance, this is um, a screenshot from the SKF bearing book. It's pretty much the engineering go-to standard that um, you know engineers use. And in here, you've got your interference. So what we're looking at is this one, which is the interference of the bearing, or let's say the male component, into the housing. So interference, transition, and loose. Now, P7 is, you know, that's a fairly tight interference fit. Now, where, where this would go, so the chap who had the bottom bracket in before would be over here. So I think it would be S6 would be what it would be. It'd be absolutely off the scale. So bearing manufacturer, and they've said that in the past when I creamed Cervelo, roasted Cervelo, um, that they wouldn't honor the warranty on it. They said the bearing um, would be too compressed. So it, that also affects your power loss. So you'll exhibit two things. You'll have to pedal harder to get, get around, and uh, also you, your bearing won't last very long. Right, now, the internals. The wrinkling, let's call it wrinkling, in this frame is what I would call excessive. So this is the seat tube. So you can see um, one of the rib nuts for the like the bottle holder on the seat tube. And that, that one there, I think, is where the front mech hanger is riveted on. But you can see all of these wrinkles. Um, wrinkles are effectively displacement voids. So that's that one. Again, um, if I just clear this pen, pointer options, erase all things on slide. Right, um, yeah, I mean, you can see this one. Look at that. It's massive. There's loads of them. Um, and here's another one. So, yeah, it's not great. And then the, to wrap it all off, we've got this. Now, this is the bottom bracket. So you can see uh, one of the chain stays here and one of the other chain stays here. Uh, I think that's right. Anyway, it's, it's the bottom bracket area. Now, I think some of this is glass fiber. Um, but anyway, I'd be interested to know your comments. But yeah, you can see the, the wrinkles in there. Now, the, the mechanical way a wrinkle kind of messes up is if I take a sheet of paper, it is quite strong. For me to be able to rip that 
would be quite difficult, you know, in pure temperature would be quite difficult. However, if you put it like this, which is like a tent, then I've got maybe 10 centimetres of movement, maybe five, like that, before you get into the, the pure tension. So the first 10 centimetres are quite weak, and then there's that. So basically, you cannot take credit for strength in this layer. Now the air, the, the, it's called redundancy, so you've got loads of these layers, so if you get another one, like this, I don't know if I can do this very well. So the bottom layer of paper is taking the tension. The top layer, because it's tented, let's call it the wrinkle, you cannot take credit for that because it's not giving you any strength. So you've effectively lost half the strength if you just had two layers. So there you go. That's that, um, you know, in a few words. Right. This, this is, now, you, typically you find problems that come together. So we've got a question of... Um, the uh, bottom bracket um, being small. We've also got a load of wrinkles, and then we've got this external contamination. Um, until you find, like, one, when you find one fault on a bike, you find loads of them. Um, so, you know, that's fairly visible on there. I don't know what it is. I think it, may, it might be some contamination because it's under the paint. Um, yeah, so that, there we go. The final thing is. Um, you know, what is done to be to fix it. So the first thing is um, we have to machine the balls to center it and correct the diameter. And because there's intrusions of the guides into the bottom bracket area, so if you've got a giant TCR, this and this, and you'll see it in a minute, um, you can't fit a normal Hambini bottom bracket in. You've got to fit a necked bottom bracket in. Um, so you rejoin me after I've corrected the balls. Um, the nominal size of the bottom bracket is 41 millimeters, and it needs to be between 40.95 and 41. And if you zoom in there, you can just see it is 40.97 to 40.98. Now, as with all these things, it always comes up with some sort of problem. Um, this is the bottom bracket the chap ordered, which is the standard sized BB86, so it's wide through the middle. Unfortunately, that one won't fit. The um, front mech cable will actually try and hacksaw its way through there. Fortunately, we can fit this one, which is the necked one. So the necked one has a much bigger uh, gap, or is narrower through the middle, so we'll have to install this one. To show you what I'm on about, you can see the front mech cable and the rear mech cable through there. So if this bike was DI2, it would probably be all right, but that is kind of in the way. Um, so the shifting would be compromised if the, the normal bottom bracket was used. So what I've done is I've just set up the press on one side and the bottom bracket to go in through the other. Um, so I'll just press this in halfway. Okay, so it goes loose, and then we'll lift this bottom bracket over the cable, put some retaining compound in, and then push it the rest of the way. So I've just got this started, and now we can complete the job. So that's in, I'll take this off. We just need to check the shifting cables working, so so that is working, so that's good. So now we just need to put the bearings and the caps in. I've got this started already. So normally if you buy the bottom bracket, it comes with the bearings already installed, but this one caught me off guard. So I put the body in, and now we're going to put the bearings and the caps in. So that's that bit done, and we can reuse the cap from his existing bottom bracket, because they're the same. So that's us complete. And that brings us to the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If there's one takeaway from this that you should perhaps take away, um, I mean, this frame is shit. Absolute shite. Complete total rubbish. I mean, it's supposed to be a team frame. The Internals of it weren't great. 
the bottom bracket was a shocker. Um, I haven't really got a good word to say about it. Just, I would avoid it. Now, it is quite possible it could be a one-off, don't know, but on the strength of it, I don't know, I don't know how the QAQC can work because it, 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 it was just well undersized. So, there we go. Right, as always, um, if you've got any questions, comments, in fact, I really would like you to comment on this one because it's a giant frame and historically, yeah, they've been quite good and people in various forums say they are quite good. Um, we're not really measuring it. So we've got one here where it's been measured um, and it didn't really come out all that well. So yeah, do comment below. And as always, until next time, keep banging your hairdresser. Now, you probably thought that was the end of this video, but it's not. We have returned to give the chap his bike back. And it's been a bit of a long day, as you can see. I need to shave. But anyway, right, let's go and give the guy his bike back. Oh, balls. I hope I get the correct house number. I usually get it wrong. In case you can't see me, it's because the camera is racist. <laughs> which one was it? Oh, balls. I'm not quite sure which number it was. I reckon it's this one. While we're in here, this is the chap's, I think it's titanium mountain bike, and he's just put one of my bottom brackets in there. Um, the welding on this is really, really good. Um, much better than that crap heat kingdom vendetta we got a few months ago. Here we go, the chap has got a Dura Ace stages crank with zero miles on it. Let's give it a spin. Oh my word. Isn't that just orgasmic? So, we have finished with that happy chappy. Now we're heading off back to the royal streets of Manchester. And as always, keep banging your hairdresser.